Oh, yeah, everybody. So we have uh, Sebastian Berger from Asplan who will tell you anything you want to know about the uh, string computers. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so before we start, uh, let me give some motivation why uh, I should be uh, interested in computing and starting with string amplitudes. So this is my introduction. Motivation. Uh, first of all, uh, as we will also see in the lecture, string amplitudes have a deep impact on, on the structure of quantum field theory amplitudes. So, is it readable, my writing? <laughs> quantum field theory amplitudes. And uh, there are, for example, uh, relations in, in field theory which uh, cannot be proven uh, in field theory or which are very difficult to prove. For, however, there are just simple consequences from um, monotropies of string world sheets. So there are um, many uh, relations in field theory emerge simply from properties of, of the string world sheets. <laughs> and as such, uh, you might have heard already uh, this are, for example, the uh, famous uh, Kawaii Welt tie relations or KFT relations, or also the BCJ relation, which, which follow very nicely from, from the model, studying monotonies of the string world. And this will be also the topic of, um, of some of my, my lectures. <laughs> <coughs> so, in the example, as a famous KT or um, is a change in many more. And uh, another, um, um, another um, important aspect of string amplitudes is that there are more and more indications that actually both string theory and string theory amplitudes. Uh, have or use the same uh, building blocks. Uh, I will just uh, tell you in a moment uh, what this means or what what are these building blocks are. <coughs> so field theory or as it abbreviated is FT and string theory was SPH. Building blocks of the same words. Uh, there is, for example, this concept of, of the so called uh, KLT karma, which we will uh, see um, in one of my lectures um, what it is. Uh, at this point, uh, this is just a bit determinant uh, uh, which, uh, which entries are kinematic invariants, so Mandelstam invariants. So this is a certain determinant. Of kinematic invariance at this point. However, this KLT kernel uh, turned out recently to be very crucial in, in, in many other instances in field theory, uh, namely, for example, uh, by the work of Kashatsu et al. Um, for, to formulate gravity and twister space. And as I said, this uh, KLT kernel naturally arises from, from string theory uh, when you uh, consider closed strings. Uh, and uh, as I said, it has an important application to field theory. Um, and of course, uh, there's, uh, you might also have heard um, recently uh, a lot of uh, talking about uh, so called scattering equations. These are certain equations um, on the world sheet of, of the string which, um, which determine subtle points on the world sheet. Actually, more precisely, uh, we will also uh, derive them. 
uh, they determine uh, the high energy behavior of string amplitudes and uh, this high energy behavior is, is given by a subtle point approximation and this equation determines the subtle point. So these are points on the subtle point <coughs> on, on the world sheet and uh, these are equations you, 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 you have to solve <coughs> uh, will be very difficult to solve um, beyond six point. However, this scattering equation recently in the work by Kashwat, Somni and Alice uh, Johan especially have turned out to be crucial uh, to describe uh, super young lens amplitude. So there's a completely different um, use of this equation coming from string theory, which is high energy string limit, so it's actually alpha prime goes to infinite, and the alpha prime goes to zero limit, which is field theory, and uh, that they are described um, super young lens, so they give a very convenient way of, of writing down super young lens amplitudes. And let me give a third concepts from string theory which proves to be very useful uh, recently in, in, in field theory. These are uh, Mellian amplitudes. So. I mean, the, Mellian, the concept of Mellian amplitudes is as old as, as a string theory. It has been um, introduced by studying uh, resonance models. So Mellian amplitudes have, are certain ampli are amplitudes with certain behavior, namely they have the lower pole expansion uh, with respect to, to kinematic invariance. And uh, they give uh, now recently uh, up, reappeared in uh, when you study uh, certain ADS CFT correlators in in um, in, in this four super young males. So this many amplitudes which are string amplitudes uh, reappear when you uh, compute certain ads cft correlators. So these are some uh, ads cft correlators uh, describing written diagrams and you can uh, compute them in position space and then you, you do a, a, a Mellian transform and then they look like Mellian amplitudes. And finally, so these are my uh, three uh, appetizers for, uh, for why string theory is important, or string amplitudes, to give impact on field theory amplitudes. And, and then finally, um, a third motivation is that uh, there are many mathematical concepts uh, emerging uh, in, in string amplitudes, uh, which are very much related to recent developments in, in, in field theory amplitudes, especially in sports of young lens. However, in, in string amplitudes, they have a much more natural, um, natural uh, appearance. Uh, so <coughs> concepts are, for example, the concept of symbols or motifs. Uh, and a co-product, uh, which will be actually the topic of my last lecture on, on Friday. So this is a user concept used in field theory, but uh, the naturally um, arise um, in string amplitudes. So indeed, what we will see on Friday is that when you uh, discuss it, or when you uh, determine the alpha prime expansion, the power series expansion in, in alpha prime of string, of linear and string amplitude, uh, it is negated by, essentially by mathematics, by, by the concept of motifing multi-seedable layers. So this is uh, negated by um, the composition of Like see the various, but this is um, for the rest of, of the week. Uh, we will go on as the mode might be see the various. In fact, this will then allow us to, to write this alpha prime function in a form which which is extremely simple and doesn't use numbers. It will be mapped to our algebra, <coughs> and, uh, which which then we should ask the question at the end that uh, there should be a way to compute this amplitude much better than. As, as we have to do it now for the moment. 
And uh, the second mathematical concepts are that there are actually unexpected relations between, uh, for example, open and closed string amplitudes. So when, when you uh, talk about uh, um, relations between open and closed string amplitude, you might think about uh, KT relations because uh, KT relations, as we can see, will give, give some sort of relations between open uh, between closed string amplitudes and actually squares of open string amplitudes. But we will find much much uh, more uh, much more uh, <coughs> dramatic relations between open and closed string amplitudes and KT relations. Uh, so this will be a relation that you see, which follow actually from this mathematical concept, but that and they go beyond KLT. So this actually will yield also to some kind of new uh, string duality concept. So. So, and the, the aim of, uh, of uh, for example, what I'm especially concerned with in my research is that uh, by combining these three points, uh, uh, it, it should ultimately be possible, uh, or that it would be as my task, uh, to find some uh, perhaps dual description of uh, how of computing uh, perturbative string amplitudes, coming especially from these mathematical concepts, in a similar way as uh, what. Uh, Nima Kani Hamid et et al are doing uh, or have done accomplished for for any response of your mills amplitudes, which which I mean uh, you might have feared that they can compute this amplitude purely without some space-time notion and deriving from 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 Grassmannian. So, so this is uh, was my motivation. Are there any questions so far? Or um, or complaint is my, my writing readable? Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay, Carlo? And uh, now after where's the other Yeah, this is So now we will come to my uh, first uh, lecture or first section of my lecture series, uh, so we will uh, go into more details of uh, uh, world ge geometry and conformal field theory properties of, of uh, string amplitudes. So I, I assume that uh, you have already heard a lot about uh, conformal field theory in two dimensions last week and second um, the week before. So but I will uh, just also give you uh, some aspects which which I find, find important for this amplitude. So, so as I have already said, many aspects uh, from from string amplitudes uh, follow, follow from their virtue properties, and this is why we will also spend quite some time um, on, on, on virtue <coughs> string amplitudes. Uh, because then, as I said, this then naturally will give us, for example, this um, KLT or BCJ relations and, and many other things which, which uh, you might also discover if you study this in more detail. 
So let me just start very basic uh, about uh, the string perturbation expansion for closed strings first, uh, and then we will see um, what we can do with it. So as you might already have read in your favorite textbooks on string object on string theory, um, this is a so you this is an endpoint um, string amplitude. It it is uh, it decomposes into a sum over over various loops. Uh, I mean or, or genus um, um, genus um, g handles, uh, uh, which is given by this sum. Uh, And this um, in, in tune can be then uh, worked out um, for each genus uh, in the following way. I mean, we have just a, a normalization constant which we have to determine for each for each genus for so this the surface um, omega. And then we have the the, the fast integral as for the quantum field theory. So we have. Now, um, first of all, the pass integral of all virgin metrics of, of, of the um, closed stringer. This is, of course, um, will be one of the problems we have to be concerned with at the moment, because there will be lots of redundancy with, with the parameterization and coordinate uh, the transformations uh, which we have to divide out. Then, of course, we have the embedding coordinates of the virgin into the target space. Uh, and in case of superstring, we also have fermions and many more fields, but eventually we have also this uh, positions of the closed strings. Uh, and uh, some vertex operators. And then Polyakov action is all these degrees of freedom so are things on the term. So what we are doing is we scatter closed strings. Uh, I mean n, uh, so let me just draw it for four. So this is four, four closed strings scattering and, and, and later I mean later could have set this set this up also for open strings uh, and uh, okay. And then, uh, as you know, we, we consider the the, um, the S matrix. So we, we consider this um, to be also an asymptotic scattering, which means that uh, this is a time where we scatter at uh, time is equal to uh, infinite. So this in and out going those strings, uh, they come. Uh, we have to stretch it to infinite this diagram, and then we can do a nice conformal transformation of this diagram, and then. Um, and then we get a sphere for this diagram with this incoming source boundaries and describing the in and outgoing closed strings uh, map to the points here on this sphere. And this are precisely the graphics operator <coughs> positions here. And so this in and outgoing um, open, uh, closed strings will be described by vertex operators. So this is uh, the, um, the virtue we have to dis discuss. At, at three level, so if genus is equal to zero and one loop, of course we have we have here some some loop and we get a coordinate and so on. Excuse me. Uh, would you care? What are the first coordinates there? Uh, the H. Uh, H, which are which is a virtual matrix. So this is a matrix of 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 this this guy of this um this uh, geometric object here. Oh, okay. So this um will is also appears in the. In the, in the Polyakov action, we have to put the pass integral. And so, how, uh, how what, what are these vertex operators? Of course, these vertex operators have to, to give us uh, um, the, the string states, uh, or describe the string states uh, state we, we send, to, uh, we send um, for which are incoming and outgoing. So, as a, as a one to one correspondence. Between a state uh, and its vertex operator, which is uh, then 
one of these guys here. So we have, as, as it's described here already on, on, on this four point scattering case, uh, we have a position C in which we want to create uh, on the, I mean, the same guy is where it's operating. Well, V V at this point X here. So this is a um, so-called operator state corresponding this. And what are vertex operators? I mean, vertex operators are virtual sheet operators that will have the same same mission and absorption, absorption of a physical onshore string mode, I mean that is just what I said, uh, from a specific point uh, on the world sheet. And um, so I mean, I just write it down. And um, you might have heard in your conformal fields here the lecture on the position states are highest weight states. So highest weight states um, are just um, defined uh, coming from uh Nasura algebra. So that is uh, a states which are consistent with the Nasura algebra. So um, this is just a remark. The two specific states we are talking about are higher state states. Phi mm. and so our higher state states uh, fulfills um, L0, which is the generator of the universe. And the silver generator of the solar algebra with some conformal weight H, and then you have know, also in addition for any positive. Now, um, uh, <coughs> we can say one more thing about uh, because the whole action has to be conformal invariant, so. Uh, this guy is uh, um, transformed with a conformal weight minus one in holomorphic and anthropomorphic coordinates. So, this vertex operator need to have conformal weight one. Huh? And so, this is to compensate the integration measure in order that the whole thing is conformal invariant. We need to, we need to, to use uh, vertex operators for conformal weight. One one in both holomorphic <coughs> and holomorphic uh, coordinates. So, in order to compensate uh, for the integration measure, and of course, if, if a coordinate independent description. Because you know that the conformal weight of this, of this differential is, is minus one. <clears throat> and uh, by that, so you can also say that 
from here, uh, you have actually primary fields with this means we have the primary fields of one way H and H order of the one. Any questions so far? So in the next section, we want to uh, discuss in more detailed uh, uh, three-level um, amplitudes. First, we will uh, discuss closed string amplitudes and then open string amplitudes and all the mixed amplitudes later. So this is a case where G the genus is zero, or where we talk about um, the sphere as in the equinology. So now, as I have said, uh, this pass integral over the over this um, relative matrix, matrix H uh, contains a lot of um, a lot of um, a lot of um, redundancies uh, describing um, coordinate transformations. I mean, reparameterizations and conformal transformations, and uh, the binary scaling, which we have now to. Uh, to take care of, uh, so we uh, need now want to compute now this object, uh, which is means G is zero. So in the rest, uh, I will also call this just um, three because it's a three-level diagram. Uh, and if we, um, when we work out this path integral over the matrix, uh, uh, we can uh, go to a conformal gauge. Uh, which means that we, 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 we introduce a, a fixed matrix because we have conformal symmetry on the vertex, so we can uh, use now conformal transformations to, to fix, uh, to go to a certain reference matrix and um, then divide out all this um, um, transforma conformal transformations. And this is done in the following. So, first of all, we have this, again have this constant to determine later actually follows from unitarity. And then we still have the pass integral over our field. So, so what we are doing now is we just work out um, the pass integral on, on, on this virtual matrix e, uh, EH or script H and um, <coughs> introducing or dividing out all this redundancy leads us to, to introduce to, um, to some pop part of pop of ghosts, uh, uh, which describes a relevant determinant to divide out, uh, so this, this will lead us to the concept of C and C ghosts, uh, and we need, of course, to complete the action with, with the action uh, in, in calling on the EC ghost action. And uh, there's, when we have introduced this, this just accounts for, for the uh, reparameterization and while uh, scaling on the sphere. Then we still have a symmetry on the sphere, which is uh, described as the conformal killing vectors. So this is a, a three-dimensional uh, um, symmetry group, uh, which we still have to, to divide out because we still have the symmetry on, on the sphere. So this gives this conformal killing group volume, which we have to take care. Then we, we have the rest, so we have the So I guess in, in the lecture uh, by uh, on, on two-dimensional conformal field theory, this was was uh, covered.
um, this uh, ultimate reveals his PC goes to? No. No. Um, <laughs> what? Hmm? No, no. No, okay. But this doesn't for Tinsky, right? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Chapter 42. <laughs> So I don't, uh, that doesn't mean if I, you don't want to hear it because it's a Patrinsky or... Um, so, um, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be, uh, I don't have time to, to go into details here because uh, I am in, in, indeed this formula is in Patrinsky, but, um, but I want to especially... Actually, I want to, but I want to spend time on, on how we curse this factor here because this 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 um, BC ghost is generic for any genus, while while this conformal killing group is uh, is special in um, in a three level because we only have conformal killing vectors at three level. Um, and I want to work out this also because um, this is in in other places also appears. For example, the work by Kashatsa and all in. And, and so it's, I think it's good to learn how to how to curve this factor. So sorry. So the point with that factor is that you have fixed some gauge, but there is still some residual gauge. Yes, which is described as which a is, formula. Which has that volume. Yeah, exactly. And and the, the rest of the fixing is described by including the PC goes which 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 uh, parameter which are fermionic fields which describe a, a determinant. So the C goes uh, sign one to one corresponds uh, to uh, reparameterizations or coordinate transformations in between uh, <coughs> the, the price that we have now uh, gone to a fixed reference matrix H uh, and uh, divided out all uh, the parameterizations and we use this uh, C ghost system. <coughs> and similar, uh, we have a P ghost system, uh, which are then variations uh, perpendicular to the chosen matrix. So this is what is called uh, the moduli of the Riemann, the Riemann uh, sphere, which, uh, of course, uh, for the sphere, uh, we know that there are no moduli, so we don't have egos. But, um, so as I said, this are fermionic fields, and this is what the prime denotes here. So we need, this is integral goes only over the non-zero non modes of the fermionic fields. Is our family only chosen? And, and the numbers of several modes is given by this formula. So for us, uh, we have. Uh, we have no no B goes no moduli on, on on the on the sphere or the disk, so N B is zero. That means uh, we have N C is is um, three, and this are precisely the um, related to the conformal to the three conformal Killing vectors. So that means we have no ghosts for the for the fermionic B field. So we we can write already this uh, this um, pass integral because there are no ghosts. We can just drop the, the prime for this part. But now we will exp we will uh, have to understand how what we do with the prime on the CC graph, and then actually turns out that this will allow us to uh, to build the reverse structure at the same time. So we have n c is equal to three. These are the conformal killing vectors. 
on this sphere. Which generate uh, uh, the, the conformal group on the sphere, which is um, a PSL 2C. So PSL 2C is given by um, this transformation. No, no, it just means that I, I, I split this into, and, and so we, we I, it just, just, just means that we don't have to worry anymore about this, it's, we just, uh, we just drop the prime, but we have still the prime here. Or, uh, or what, what was your question? Yeah, so in this uh, way of writing it, we're just dropping the one over the C, the C is fine. Right? And the one over the B. The B, sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes. Good. Yes, yeah. And now we actually now we worry about how to drop this also for the C's. Okay. So uh, we have this PSL 2C transformation on the sphere, uh, which is which actually is, uh, is uh, generated by, by the three conformal filling vectors. Um, we have, uh, <coughs> so I, um, let us just um, see what these transformations are doing. And which is just uh, um, the generators generating this. Um, Uh, coordinate transformation. So we have a uh, um, and we have a translation which goes from um, C plus B. So this is just uh, the part where uh, we are in the B's um, and get extractions from this transformation. <coughs> And uh, when you, I mean, the infinitesimal version of it is, of course, just that you, it is um, parameter is infinitesimal. And this is infinitesimal. And it's finite. And we also have, have a scaling. So we have uh, C goes to A times C. And uh, then the infinitesimal version is that you just form it from, from one, uh, so it's C plus alpha C. And finally, we have special conformal transformations. given by this transformation. Now you can also extract from this, so this is C times Z plus one. Uh, you can expand this, uh, tail, um, the form of tail expand with respect to small c, so, and then uh, the infinitesimal version uh, when it can be looks so as you see, if you take this um, for small c, so the first term is of course uh, just c, c divided over 1, which is here. And the next term is to take expand so get a square of this, and um, which is then just by introducing a new parameter, gamma, you get this c squared. So in total, uh, we have the following symmetry on our worksheet. Namely, 
<coughs> by taking this three generators or this three um, transformations together. Will first of all tell us what what are the still the remaining transformations on um, on the world on the world sheets or this um, what we can add on this world sheets um, coordinates so, so the PSL two C what we have just seen here is uh, um, is generated by by this three transformation and now we can actually then use this because this is still a symmetry transformation which is left over we can use it for example to uh, to fix one of uh, some of these Lagrange operators and of course we have we have here n independent coordinates so uh, then we have here three transformation we can fix uh, um, three of the holomorphic and three of the anti-holomorphic coordinates. So this is the main point what we need, want to do now. We want to, to do some variation on, on three of the vertex operator positions along this, this um, transformation we have found. Because this is a result, this is infinitesimal transformations, and we can use them to, um, to set three of because we have three parameters to set three of the vertex operator positions. To an arbitrary position. So we can um, can be used this symmetry. To fix. So that is operator positions. For any point we, we wish, is this is point clear or that we can do this because we still have um, this residual uh, conformal filling group symmetry, so we can apply it and and, uh, and choose uh, um, or transform three of these points. Uh, to, to any <coughs> arbitrary points because we, then we still uh, have the symmetry which allows us to, to go to the generic points. Yeah. So in other words, what we what we are actually what we doing is we replace uh, three of these integration measures by <coughs> measures over over this uh, parameters describing this conformal transformation. So we, this, of course now we have to compute a Jacobian, which uh, tells us or which gives us the uh, transformation properties from three coordinates measures from here to uh, to this uh, group transformation measures or the measure to the, to the measure of the group transformation. So we we have started with or among this n measures we have this three measures of the vertex operators positions we want to fix. Uh, and this now we trade <coughs> as measure over this over this um, alpha beta and gamma parameters describing the conformal transformation transformation. So we can write it as an integral over d alpha, d beta, and d gamma, and now we have to compute the Jacobian. And then we are done, so then we can write, we can replace three positions by, by this and actually define some simplification. So here you simply have to write down um, this, this uh, compute this Jacobian, so this is just the determinant of, so you have to, you have to do it for each. Of the three points, you have such a transformation. So, uh, and now you, you compute this um, Jacobian. So, what you get is, and you compute this. Which you can do as, as a homework. And, and the result is T1 minus T2 is 
2 minus C3 and C3 minus C1 uh, and the same thing for antimonomorphic coordinates. Times uh, uh, still of course times uh, this this guy here. And this is so this is a this is a volume and this is a volume of of the group uh, of the group uh, we are talking about here. So this is the volume of the killing precisely the volume of the conformal killing network. What we had already uh, seen before. So this is so that's now very good result because uh, this will precisely cancel this this um, inverse conformal killing group uh, volume uh, which appeared in front of the passing integral. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a cost that uh, we, we, we have now this additional factor here which is um, however much easier to treat. Uh, Sorry, on the right hand side you are still integrating over something, right? Uh, <coughs> I don't understand. On the left hand side you are integrating over C1, C2, C3, and the right hand side seems to depend on C1, C2, C3, which is funny. Well, these are now uh, these are now arbitrary points. So these are the points where you have put your operation, which I fix by this transformation. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, that maybe we should. Yeah. Uh, should find uh, zero. Yeah, these are now, of course, fixed points, but they are arbitrary. So, what we have learned now is that uh, when we do this three level computation, is we, we simply fix three positions, I mean, to, to see I zero, so fix three positions. And introduce this factor here and get rid of it or drop this factor. So I am um, in all my. Uh, so in other words, uh, what we can do is we can just uh, replace this. Uh, Integral by, by this uh, factor. And as Fernando pointed out, this has a fixed point here. So we call we had this inverse in front of the pass integral, so it will, this of course is sloppy notation because then the, uh, you suppose that they, you also uh, drop the integral signs, uh, and so this will. Will then the inverse will, will drop all this, uh, these three measures and will introduce this factor here. But I write this here because, uh, especially in the new papers by um, uh, by Freddy um, Kaschatz and all, they, they write this like that. And so it's a kind of, of useful um, notation. So, but now we still have this. Uh, this prime um, to, to deal with uh, in front of the pass integral. So now, now this is more formal. What we have achieved so far is that we, we know how to deal with this uh, conformal killing group uh, volume, um, which we got I mean, very nice rid of it very, in a very, very nice way by trading uh, this uh, conformal symmetry by the time I said it's so that group of conformal, um, the conformal um, I mean the parameters which um, generate this group by getting the parameters <coughs> as, as parameters um, fixing the as fixed and, and 
translating and fixing um, the graphics of our compositions. But now, uh, recall the following. There's a, a C-Ghost correlator. Which, uh, you will learn in the component weeks in the next one. So, I mean, if, if you haven't learned it in the component bits recourse, then uh, according to who it's <coughs> um, um, This is how, I mean, we will deal with conformal fields, and I mean, there are one of those fields that is known uh, as C goes, and then it's just for later. Um, but this is now uh, very nice because. Uh, this is correlator actually we can now uh, you see it has exactly the same form as what uh, what is introduced through this fixing so we can actually now get a very nicely right this part in regard namely um, so So the pass integral over the C ghost, including the, the zero modes, including the zero modes. So then, of course, uh, without you need to introduce also um, the fields in the in the in the, in the numerator so, uh, to to cancel the zero ghost. So then this is explicitly. This doesn't. This is not yet correlated to the pass integral I'm, I'm talking about. This is just a, a going to be a a nice relation. So this is just by, by its own uh, will be now uh, turned out to be a nice relation. So these are the zero modes, uh, and we need a three of them because we now from our um, from um, some minutes ago that uh, there are for each. Uh, Holomorphic and isomorphic sites, there are three zero modes uh, for C. So, with this having three of them here, we can precisely fill them. And uh, this relation is, um, is uh, then transforming, giving us uh, the pass integral of what is left over um, over the non zero modes because the zero mode integration just kills this, this, and then it's done. The integration is done, what we are left with non zero modes, but we will do them. And times the action. And this is just the determinant of, um, of the zero modes uh, to be computed. In other words, this is such an integral. This is generic for any field. I mean, we can now also could write it uh, with any field phi. And maybe it's, it's uh, maybe, uh, yeah, you can, if you, if you want, uh, also replace C with phi. It's just for, for, uh, for any generic fermionic field having, having uh, three zero modes. So then you get such an equation um, which pick up, picks up a determinant. And uh, and leaves uh, a final um, pass integral without zero modes. So um, this formula comes from from the following, uh, which essentially says the same. So you have a field uh, which has zero modes, so it has a zero. 
has a zero mode and try zero, so it's a zero mode and then non zero mode part. So if the field has n zero mode, here we have n, we have three zero modes. So now let's assume that this field has, has n zero modes. Then we can expand the zero mode with an example of, of, of a basis of, of n zero modes, uh, and then we have a field. <coughs> And it's just for, for the for the market part. Plus the non-zero mode part. So this is simply I mean this is simply a triviality and we have so we split the field into zero mode part and non-zero mode part, and then you know the number by some geometric arguments, for example, the number of zero modes for this field. So if uh, you expand this zero mode with one of the basis, and then you have this uh, weight functions for each basis element. And then the pass integral of such a figure. And now you need, as I, I, as I described here, you need now um, n zero modes to integrate over to. Get rid of a few all zero modes, and the same for the zero mode and under the mode of fields. Okay, we have a fast integral from the non zero modes, and then you get this, you, you will obtain this determinant here. So, this is precisely what you want this determinant to be. So, this is the determinant of. This uh, weight function with normalizations. And then you have a pass integral left over, always a non zero mode part, so it's precisely uh, like here is the only triangle. So you see, this is, this is the general equation when you have um, integrate over a field. I have a pass integral over a field with zero modes. Then uh, this is how you can um, split the, the field into a type of zero modes and not zero modes, and then you get this. So this is now what we do for the C field here. For the C field, I mean, you only need to replace n by, by three, and um, and at five we simply call um, call C. Now, the only thing what we are left, left to do now is compute for the C field the determinant. And then uh, we can, we know how to convert a pass integral um, over this DC in bar to a pass integral um, with, this, with this prime or vice versa. So for this conformal killing, um, killing fields, uh, this uh, zero mode weight function are just this uh, perturbations we have we have um, we have worked out for the conformal transformation. So you have, you have these fields here as for your five fields with <coughs> the zero mode fields of, of the C, and then you you compute this. Determinant, and this is just the same determinant we have computed before. And this you see that um, that uh, you get the result is the same factor as. 
we have seen uh, to get from to conform the Killing vector. So use this we have to insert as a pass integral from the beginning, and it's inverse, so it could mean this is factor. But now we see that we would get another factor if we would integrate another factor in the denom in the numerator, uh, if we would extend the, the pass integral integration from PC prime to PC, then we would precisely get this factor. So that means um, Rather than take, taking this times this factor, which is precisely uh, the factor we need, uh, we can immediately write the, the full pass integral of the PC bar with this drop in supply. So, this is the whole point uh, that now we can write this three level amplitude in the following way. So we, we don't need this uh, conformal filling in this conformal filling group anymore because um, instead we fix three vertex operator positions, get this factor. This factor we don't write it because instead we, we write this, uh, we extend the, the prime integral to the full integral. Of course, then um, we would get this factor in addition, but this is precisely uh, this factor which we anyhow. Would have to edit, would, would have had to add uh, because of the uh, dividing out the conformal filling. So that perfectly matches together, and we then uh, have only this left, uh, only left with this piece here. And then, of course, we have to write this integral rather than this integral, so that means we have explicitly to write this uh, C piece here, this three. Because otherwise, uh, then because now we have extended to the non zero modes, it would be, it would be uh, zero. So we have now this. So we have a similar term for the second coordinate. This is a three holomorphic and anti holomorphic uh, C fields we need to, to um, cancel with the zero modes, uh, which, are, which, are, which are needed to, to soak up the zero modes. And then uh, we, we don't have integrals from the vertex operator positions anymore because we, we, we have fixed them at the price of getting rid of this conformal filling group factor. formula for this uh, which we can use to, uh, to compute uh, three level amplitudes which comes from this um, general pass integral after fixing all, all symmetries uh, <coughs> and uh, trading symmetries or this uh, determinants with, with some uh, ghost fields uh, because this is nothing else than um, and the correlator of these objects. And this is the object <coughs> that has to compute the conformal field theory. I mean, the conformal field theory method, which we will do uh, in a moment. So this, uh, So the 
Are there um, questions for the author after this step? Maybe you could just clarify this by I. So if they have something to do with the internet that's not generated by the situation generator. Yes, we have decided with this uh, generators, this internet is my generators we have worked out um, on this side of the blackboard. Um, and then this conformal filling group is precisely related to, to the number of, of zero modes of, of the C ghost field. So uh, that is precisely can describe the zero mode wave function precisely by this by this uh, by this um, <coughs> and then we we only need to compute the So the main point of this exercise was so far to, um, to boil down uh, the path integral uh, from this generic expression with, with this, um, many volumina and, and, and p ghost um, um, I mean this p ghost path integral over non-zero modes to a more tractable object, which then will be used for doing the computation. And we now we we now precisely what to do. We, we have this uh, three vertex operator conditions, C1, C2, and C3, which we can fix. Them. And uh, then we need to have an infinity, we need to integrate over the remaining n minus u vertex operator position, then, uh, but we also have this C uh, ghosts introduced, which, uh, which allowed us to essentially to, um, to write the full result of the path integral over the full field. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I wanted to ask you that. Yeah, anyway. yeah maybe you can do it now. Right. <laughs> but so you come back in five minutes or monthly or you stay here? Yeah, yeah we will come back in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so now we, we have to essentially to do the same exercise uh, for three level arbitrals uh, with open strings, but actually uh, that we have learned already how to deal with the zero modes and this conformal killing group, uh, we can uh, we apply many of these methods. And uh, the only actually new thing is now that we have to, to, um, to uh, understand how the world sheet of, of um, open string scattering is, is described uh, in contrast to the sphere. Because now we will get a so-called disk world sheet group. Describe the scatter and then we have to work out the differences. So now we we, we have uh, instead of n closed strings, we consider n open strings scattering. And let, let's first see what the world sheet, the underlying world sheet is. So, so we have um, considered three level uh, propagation of an open string. And this is, uh, of course, very clear. So you have an open string with coordinate sigma, so the sigma belongs from zero to pi. And this open string is moving uh, just in time. Huh? So you have here tau, which is a virtual time, and then let's say you use tau plus infinite, and here is tau to minus infinite. So this is what one open string. Um, is, is doing while it is moving from 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 here to here from time to minus infinity plus infinity and, and so this let's say tau to zero <clears throat> so it's a so-called um, infinitely long strip infinitely long strip And now uh, we don't want to work with this, we do a conformal transformation um, and get a different object. So this conformal transformation does the following one. It is two coordinates sigma and tau, because so it's sigma coordinate, and it is tau coordinate, so it's like a thing. 
I mean, you can just see what, what, is, uh, what is going on. I mean, then, for example, take tau is equal to zero, which is this line here. Uh, then you'll just get the unit circle. So, maybe what we get now is in the C plane, we get for the unit circle describing how is it to zero for the exist line? And then you can uh, see, for example, what is what is tau is equal to infinite uh, um, doing? I mean, that is, of course, uh, if you put here tau is equal to infinite, uh, you get zero. So this goes here. And uh, you see that the open string ends are, are going to, to the left and right uh, part of this, um, of this um, coordinate system. So in other words, uh, um, this is the open string at time is equal to, to zero. So here it's, it's, it's one, it is uh, the end at sigma is equal to pi, and it's its other end at sigma is equal to, um, to zero. And any other uh, open string at, at a given time, how it goes to, to this assumption of half circle. So this is a fixed, a fixed half slice. And so you can see that, um, that um, of course, this tau is equal to the zero pointer. Um, then we have not only uh, we have can of course uh, for tau one tau is equal to infinite. Of course, then it becomes infinite, so you, you really stretch the whole upper half plane. So that is uh, where we are going from that. This is the upper half plane, rather than this infinite long strip. So the, the main point is that the open string ends are along the real axis, but we are still not happy with this uh, figure. We can uh, do another conformal transformation. <coughs> and now we take this coordinate C and introduce a new, new coordinate W, which is given by this old C like this. And now you can uh, for example see where uh, where this um, let's say the, the blue point is going. The blue point is uh, goes to which is tau is equal to minus and it goes to minus one. No? So you can, when you insert this, um, this blue point, uh, which is zero, and of course you have zero in here, and then this is just becomes minus one. So it's, it goes here to minus one. And similar for the, <coughs> for tau is equal to, to infinite, which was just uh, the whole, was just c is equal to infinite here. Um, this is um, this was just the according to formula, so this was plus one. And uh, now the open strings are actually um, can, uh, just imagine by by looking what uh, so the sigma ends at the beginning zero and, and pi are doing. I mean, this means that C is real in this picture because we, we have seen that there are no this boundary. And now you can do look what a real coordinate done. Um, what is um, what what is what is happening with a real coordinate transformation? <coughs> so we can, for example, take C is equal to x, so it's really a real number, and then compute. 
the convergence <coughs> and uh, um, it turns out that uh, you can just do it as a homework that the real part squared is <coughs> in that real part squared is one of this of um, this coordinate, so that means uh, um, any of this open string ends sigma is equal to zero or pi are met to this unit circle. Described as this equation so. so, for example, uh, the red line, the power is equal to zero. Um, is mapped to this line here, and here we have sigma is equal to zero. As I said, the whole um, unit circle only describes open string ends. And so any other open string move, um, looks like that. So this is, um, <coughs> this is now um, the the word should be discussed for scattering of open strings because um, <clears throat> I mean you can do it now not only for one open string but for many open strings and, and then you get always this picture and in line of a sphere where this, uh, <clears throat> where this um, open string uh, closed strings are graded so vertex operator position now we will see that open strings are graded along the boundary of this of this, um, of this um, disk. So this, this I mean, depending what what uh, what we want to, uh, essentially it's it's um, it's um, depends on what you uh, what is more convenient in, in, the, in the current uh, cases. We can work with this version or with this set version. And now we want to describe <coughs> this version geometrically such that we know how to introduce coordinates. And, so here we have this is called a disk, and this is an upper half plane, but I actually some um, usually box because they are isomorphic and you can also usually both of them are called disk. So we have to deal with the surface with boundaries. And you might know from geometry that this can be can be uh, described as this evolutions. Another name of evolutions are orbit points of close three months. So that is precisely what we are doing now as we, we take our closed Riemann surface, uh, which was a trilateral sphere, and we do some involution, and then we get, or we can uh, take over many of, of the results described before, by simply uh, looking what this involution is doing. So the disk, uh, I mean, this was this, this is uh, I mean, this up sphere is um, is a is a two portion of, of the sphere, as as I think you have learned in the, um, somewhere in school. So let's call this disk uh, D two. This you can get from the sphere by identifying this is the evolution of these two coordinates. Uh, so this is a C2 portion of the sphere. And you see that what is a, um, the involution, so all before it's a fixed point, and you can see clearly what the fixed point is. The fixed point is, the, um, is of course, is the boundary here. And 
ganz alternativ way was es auf der Haftplan uh, where you just identify holomorphic and anthropomorphic coordinates. Then again you have a fixed line here which is the real axis. So this is an identification. Now of course um, then we, we start with this with a sphere um, uh, the conforming conformal killing group is just a, a computing part of the C2 action, so it's a subgroup of, of the full PSL2 to so C group. So the conformal killing group, which on the sphere was this PSL2C, is now a subgroup. And of course, uh, you can determine by, by asking that we must leave the, the boundary invariant. And this is nothing else uh, in mathematics this is the So this is, I mean, this is a situation really. You can compute it, so let's compute it for, for the disk. And I mean, well, actually, it turns out that for the disk, uh, the subgroup is given by the matrices A, B, C, D. Recall this was the matrix. Uh, I used um, at the beginning for describing PSL2 to see transformations, and now we, we, I mean, as we have seen, we get only a subgroup of it, and the subgroup is, is SU1,1, uh, which is the following, um, determined by the following constraints here. And uh, for the upper half plane, this is PSL2R. And so kind of clear because um, if you if if you would have complex coordinates, I mean it would uh, it would do something on our boundary, which is a real axis. So it's kind of clear that we need, we need to have uh, real coordinates only. So then we have A, B, C, and of course we have always a, this constraint. So this is you see when we have three real parameters now, which are again in one to one correspond to this to, to our conformal killing uh, vectors. So you see that the disk has only out of this for the sphere we had uh, six conformal killing vectors, one three for for the for the holomorphic and three for the anthropomorphic coordinate. And now this projection has done just projected out three of them and we are left over this with three. And of course, I mean, uh, the whole thing um, makes, of course, perfect sense because this, you can show that these two groups are, are isomorphic. So it's a um, bit different on what, what description we are talking about. <coughs> So, as I said, um, half of the six conformal killing vectors survives the projections. And there are all the three real conformal killing vectors. Three 
Sorry for the writing. So half of six confined killing vectors. Uh, so a value which of course has three and this is a just a ideal of killing vectors. Are there questions for this? So with this knowledge now we can uh, now um, um, abbreviate uh, what we did before for this was a sphere for a closed string scattering and write down the correlator for open string um, for open string scattering. So, what we qualitatively we have the following um, without um, yet uh, worrying about the zero mode uh, part of the C ghosts uh, um, and still writing this conformal killing group, which now is, is um, consists of these three real conformal killing vectors. We have the following amplitude. Now I will also actually write um, this coupling because we want to understand this later also. I will explain it in a moment to you. So and now we, we can what we can of course also do is we can not only uh, scatter open strings, we can also scatter at the same time with, with closed strings because open strings can might may join and, and then uh, Form closed strings, so uh, that is what we want to do. Also, have in the general setup, so we have um, NO open strings, we have MNC closed strings, and then, of course, as we have seen before, this will boil down to a correlator of modulo the C ghost field and, and getting rid of this guy here. So these are the open and all open string vertex operators and then these are the closed string vertex operators. And now in contrast to um, what I have written before for the G-level, I mean for, for scattering only um, closed strings on, on the sphere, now we have to work it out on the disk by like for example this D2, which means we we we'll get uh, correlation functions on, for example, this uh, this this that is precisely where you see a difference, and depending on whether you work with mm -hmm. this upper half plane or with a disk, uh, I mean the the Green's functions will look different because you have different coordinates. And so let us just um, first uh, before we. Put this into, into the final form. Let us first understand uh, this factor here. <clears throat> I mean, each each closed string, uh, when you scatter it at a word sheet, it comes with a, as a coupling, which is a closed string coupling. So each closed string brings a, brings one unit of, of G string. Huh? So we have G, G close, that's the closed string coupling, which is nothing else than this string coupling. And uh, for the open strings, this involves the open string coupling, which is uh, the square root of the closed string coupling. In SEO. Right now is that the closed string coupling is also related to the to the Dilaton field. I mean from here you see where also the G open square is G closed, of course. And um, now we we had each virtual topology.
uh, as, as an Euler number, which is compared to be 2 minus 2 g minus b minus c, which is b the number of um, boundaries and c the number of cross caps. Um, so each word sheet, this simply comes from the, when you work out the Polyakov action, there's a, there's a Riemann. There's a Riemann term, and there's an Einstein Hilbert term, uh, which, which gives then this, this factor. So when you compute it for a disk, uh, disk has, has, um, has, has zero genos uh, and one, one boundary, which was this, for example, this real axis, no cross cut, uh, two minus uh, one is, is one. Uh, so uh, for this sphere, you have this is simply then e to the minus five. Which is this term here? So the same formula, the same factor. I didn't write this factor for the closed string um, scattering before. And for the closed string scattering, we would have uh, we would have just I mean no uh, sphere has no boundaries, so we would have just two. I would have to write here two. And this is actually uh, essentially also respect. Um, um, this essentially also. Um, and describes or is responsible uh, why, for example, gauge couplings have a different dependence on this Hilbert factor than, than um, gravitational couplings. So, let me ask you so this G string to the NC plus one half of? Uh, okay, sorry. Oh, ah, I know. Sorry, I'll say. Okay, this is all what I wanted to say uh, for this. So if you if you take it this factor for um, C close string, of course you get this, and for open string you get um, one half. So this factor does. And I mean the, the open string coupling eventually will, will be because you do, for example, when you have something on deeper and set up um, the open strings describe um, young lids. Fields this will be related to the coupling also, and actually also create this G string as the young coupling. So, so may I ask you a question about this? So maybe you said it already. Are we assuming that the target space geometry is flat space? Or uh, yeah, I will come to this. At, at this point, I have not yet. Um, I have not specified yet uh, the target space because I didn't tell you in detail how to work out this correlator. So at this point it might be still a uh, graph, but as, um, um, I mean, later we will, uh, we will uh, go to free field, uh, free field descriptions, I mean, and then we have to, to assume that, I mean, we can only do this for a free field description. But at this point it's, um, it's still generic. So now um, to let's uh, first of all uh, make this kind of quality and then second also again get rid of this conformal killing um, uh, the volume of conformal killing group. Now we have now we have um, only three real killing vectors. So in the same reasoning as um, as we suppose for the sphere, we can now also use this to fix vertex operator positions. But of course now, because we have only half of the symmetry, or half of these parameters, alpha, beta, and gamma, uh, we can only fix uh, three real positions. So this is now how to, um, how to um, continue. How, so we use this, the three real parameters of the conformity group. I mean, it was, uh, we have seen TSL2R for, for when we talk about the upper half plane. To fix um, the positions of, um, now we can fix here, of course, we, we can now um, fix many things. So the easiest uh, is, of course, fix. Because we can only fix uh, real, three real positions, we can, for example, just fix three open string positions. But um, 
But I mean, the main point is we have three parameters, <coughs> and it was alpha, theta, gamma. So we could, of course, use these three parameters also to fix uh, to fix um, this um, closed string positions and one open. So um, we can fix, um, you know, for example, we can do fix three open string positions. But uh, other fixings are also possible. This is the only thing what I want to point out. And now then it uh, turn out to be more useful. For example, you can uh, also do this. Uh, I mean, just now to be really concrete. Put the close screen position at i and minus i, and then you have um, um, you can fix so two open to one, which is effectively one open string position fixed in addition. So you, this is you can uh, this you can do by applying um, PSL to R transformation on on this coordinates. Um, you have only three real coordinates, three real parameters. Alpha, beta, gamma to fix this, and this um, you can do. But there's actually, you have to be careful. Um, some fixings, um, I mean, for example, what you cannot do is, um, you can, for example, what you are not allowed to do is, uh, for example, to put one closed string at infinite, um, another, um, another closed string at, at one, uh, sorry, another one open string at infinite, another closed string at zero, and then uh, we can still we can still fix one position. For example, we could fix um, we could fix one closed string to be at i x and the other one more is at one minus one x. So we have for this we need three real parameters. But when you when you work work it out. Uh, uh, in practice, so you really want to um, determine your alpha, beta, and gamma from your PSL 2 R transformation. You will see that this is not possible. You get some at some point, they get an error in the equations that you cannot uh, use this transformation because this is too spe special. This is C somehow, it, uh, um, you have um, too many points along a line. I only stress it because actually, I <laughs> many years ago, I, I, I chose this fixing and I, I simply didn't uh, really try out whether it is really a PSL 2 R transformation and then the completed correlation function, and now I realized that they give me wrong answers. And, and I didn't know for a long time what's missing, and then I realized that this fixing was not. Because it would be a very nice, convenient fixing because things would simplify a lot. So now, of course, we have again this uh, PSL to R transformation, which is parameter alpha, beta, and gamma, and, and this can be now used uh, in the same spirit as before by writing, uh, by introducing this um, gen generic transformations alpha, beta, gamma, acting on, let's say, for example, three open string positions to to create um, this in integrations of three points uh, as integral over this. Um, uh, parameters of the conformal killing group, which eventually then cancels the structure. It's a cost wide, um, in a, in, it's a price that we, we leave out with the integrations of open strings. So, this precisely analog as we did for this here. So, again, uh, um, the Jacobian. Of, of the transformation. From the fixed coordinates, like for example, the open string positions. The parameter of the field of R, which, which describes this. Um, Fixing can be represented mm -hmm. 
So they will get again. I mean, they will not. They will cancel this factor, and we get a bit addition. In addition, this again this um, difference of points. So x one minus we have x. So. And this again we can now um, describe as a seagulls correlator of, of city, um, um, real seagulls, uh, which then um, allow us to write them. <coughs> so it's completely analog as in the, uh, on the sphere, except that now we have only half of the fields or parameters. Can be represented as a correlation of three ghost um, insertions. Okay, so we we first fix uh, three positions and can get rid of uh, this uh, conformal clean group, but we get this factor addition, and again, as before, we can um, obtain this factor by uh, moving from by introducing C ghost correlators, which which soak up the zero modes from the passing regard. So then, uh, then we are done with this. Or are there any questions? Yes. <coughs> so the, what we will can do now is make an equality process. And this factor here will, will be produced by what you see, three C ghosts. Okay, then let me make a, I should um, finish in time at this point. Um, then let me make a final point. Um, what is um, Another, I mean, let's say another detail of this uh, fixing three vertex operator positions. Um, I mean, once you, you, you choose, a, um, once, once you choose um, a certain fixing, like for example, you can uh, typically fixing is that you put one of the vertex opposite and operated minus e, another one at, um, at zero, and then a third, the third one at one. Yeah? So this is a, can you talk about the upper half plane, so they are aligned along the real axis. And uh, then this fixing uh, corresponds, with this fixing you, you have, um, you have um, stick to a certain cyclic symmetry, uh, which, which means that uh, this fixing does not allow you uh, to, to describe uh, cyclic, cyclic transformed, um, I mean, Describe you, for example, the case when when uh, two and three is exchanged. Uh, so you don't get the full you don't get the full uh, the full um, the full uh, part of the amplitude, and then you have to that you have to uh, to curve by hand uh, at the end. So um, so this is the note that that. Um, when you apply this PSL to R transformation on to fix three vertex operator position, this will, for example, put you to this to this choice. However, then um, you have um, cyclic symmetry, and this corresponds to cyclic symmetry, and you cannot um, so the, the PSL to R transformation does not preserve this, or does I mean six to cyclic symmetry. So you are saying the operators cannot jump each other. Mm. 
the operators cannot jump each other. You have you. Yeah, have it, to once once I do this fixing, I cannot change it to, uh, mm -hmm. for example, get uh, two. Uh, all the three two. one. Mm -hmm. And this I have to do by hand. I mean this. Mm -hmm. So can I change the PSO to R transformation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I cannot jump to a three, for example. So, I mean, in other words, um, if I choose such a specific choice, it will always stick to a certain set of color orderings. I mean, you have blue ones here. And uh, I need to make sure that I also get the rest of the remaining color orderings. And, um, yeah, this we will. Um, I mean, this, this is a, a reality how to input all these color variables. <coughs> um, this we will do in the, in the next lecture. Mm -hmm. <coughs>